All right, so I've got my EPS. Notice that EPSs will always show up on your uh, screen on a Mac like it's on graph paper. And it's not great practice to leave in the .png .eps, so I'll usually take that out, just the .png. And now I would, just like I did for my logo, I would go to Photoshop. And I would say File New, because that other one was very low resolution. And I'll call this a simple um, coloring test. But I want to make it basically letter size. <laughs> but I want to make it, oh, I'm an illustrator. I don't want to be an illustrator. I want to be in Photoshop. So let me quit Illustrator. Save all those. Da -da 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 -da. I go back to Photoshop. It can get confusing working between the two. I can close this one now. Now I open a new file, new blank file, 8 by 10 inches by 350. If I wanted to make it even bigger, I can make it 13 by 19 inches by 350. And I'll call this my, my link color test. Simple. It's a simpler drawing, simpler line work which can be, in some ways, more fun to color. I bring it in, I scale it up, and because it's a vector, it will scale perfectly. And now I have super clean line work to color behind as a vector, so I can even resize it from here. Okay, the next approach. Let's go right from a pencil sketch Or better yet, something that is, um, let's see, is this inked? Yeah, that's inked on, ink on sketch paper. So here's something that's kind of like a pencil sketch. This is an ink wash sketch in a colored sketchbook. Right? So how do I clean this up? If I duplicate it, if I use levels, you're going to see that I start to lose a lot. Because in order to get the grays all to go to white, I'm going to lose a lot of outline. Kind of like that. And then if I desaturate it, take all that yellow out, and then push those levels even further, it starts to look like a really, you know, really like a photocopy. Very, very pixelated. And the problem is, if I try to um, select just the black, like I had before, and duplicate it on top, and then Gaussian blur it a little bit, just a little bit, not even a full pixel, and then duplicate that. Let's see how that smooths it out. Kind of, but it doesn't give me what I want exactly. So the option here might be to digitally ink it. So let's merge all those together. Let's see what we've got. I'll put white behind it. We're going to do lots of these fills behind. So this is about as good as I can get it, just cleaning up the scan in Photoshop. And that might vectorize OK. In fact, it probably will, but there'll be lots of areas I need to fill in later. So let's, let's try it. I'm going to just take that layer, turn off the background, say File, Save As. Well, before I do that, I can do a new layer on top. 
and the areas I'm worried about losing, like that leg I would lose entirely, I can digitally ink. So what do I do? I set my coloring to the defaults, black on the top, white in the bottom. I go to my brush tool. I choose a simple scale-based brush, you know, which is pressure sensitive to size. Take the size pretty small. Hardness, I'm going to put not at 100%, but more like 90% to be like an ink pen. Oh, and I want to make sure my opacity is at 100%, my flow is at 100%, and that it's at normal mode. So if tools are not working the way you think, you change them. And then I can draw some of these connectors in. So this is one way of digital inking. You always do it on a separate layer. But you can see how you can get pretty clean line work that way. And it can be a combination of both. So if I really want this hand to show up more, I can digitally ink around it. I can definitely ink the shadows. But I always like to work from at least a sketch that's scanned in first or that's photographed into the computer. And we have scanners at the back of the room we can use. And we just put them into the class Dropbox and pull them right down from there. Another illustrator's trick when inking is to darken at the V, which means, you know, as I want this hand to pop on the background, so as I get into these, the, in between the fingers where it goes to a V shape, I want to darken that up. Or the elbow, I want to darken that up, thicken that outline, give that a little bit more space. And I use, remember, I'm using a pressure sensitive marker here, or paintbrush here. So if I push a little bit harder, I can get that thicker line when I want it. So looking to darken towards the V. There's usually a pretty heavy shadow underneath the jaw, which can be helpful too. And I can digitally ink in some other features here. And just like you can digitally ink, the benefit beyond traditional inking is you can also erase away, should you want to do that. But I can add on a more interesting outside shape here. This is a pretty fussy illustration, but it, it would make a good spot. OK, so what is that? digital inked line look like, it looks like that. Nice and clean and that would vectorize well. Or I can just have those two together when I save it as a PSD and that would vectorize well. And I can bring that over. Now let's look at the most like unprepared way <laughs> to go about this. Let's find in Google Images, just rough pencil sketch of a knight. Since I'm on this knight theme for myself. So I've been working on a spot illustration, but I just have a rough sketch. I want something pretty simple. This one looks nice. Could be simpler, but that will work. Oh, I like that. I'm going to play with this. This minot minotaur design. Okay, so you see a rough sketch might be just low resolution. It's only 300 by 400 pixels. That's a slightly nicer rough sketch. But you can see all the basic shape lines and stuff. I'll work on both of these really quick. Open them in Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is increase their resolution. So make it 350 at least. So something that's at least printable by, let's see, eight inches here. We'll really soften that up, but that's just a guideline, right? I'm not going to be able to do anything from that, so I'll have to, to re-ink it for sure. And then this one, let's make that image resolution high enough. A common mistake is to make the image resolution only big enough for 
for online because that's where you maybe scanned your image what you init initially scanned your image for but I'm gonna make sure they're at least print quality so 350 by 8 by 10 and then I'm only interested in this one because that's the one that works best as a spot illustration so what do I do well first in this case because it's pretty dark I'm gonna make a duplicate of it and I'm going to make a new layer background that I fill with white. So edit fill white, move that behind everything. And then I'm going to take the opacity down so it's not so strong. So it's just a, a guiding sketch. Now on top of that, I'm going to have my ink line. And the most basic way to digitally ink is to just take your brush at the right settings, at the right size, and then just start drawing it in. Just like you would ink on tracing paper or what have you. Now in this case, I need to finish up a lot of detail, like the fingers, but that sketch gives me the guidance I need. The basic shapes give me the guidance I need underneath. I know where everything belongs. And depending on how refined I want it to be, I could add more detail. This shows another common mistake. Um, the clenched fist around a weapon, the thumb would not be at that angle. So the benefit of digital inking is you can just erase on the go, fix things just like that. So I could erase this thumb out from the sketch and replace it with a thumb that's at the right angle for holding a weapon to show that open space in the grip. Other mistake is the weapon is not lined up with the, with the hand angle. So I could go to the sketch, and this is my favorite thing about working on this digitally a little bit, no matter what method you use. And I can use my composite skills. I can rotate it slightly to get that to line up. And then go to my ink line and finish it up. And that depends on the level of finish you want. Now if I want an exact clean blade, this is the new inking approach I can show you that might be useful to you. We use some of the vector tools within Photoshop just very quickly. I'm going to use the pin tool, just like an illustrator. I'm going to start it down here. I'm going to end the curve here to get a perfectly kind of leaf shaped blade. End it back here. And then use these tools to get the shape I want for the blade. Okay, Now all I have is a vector path. So in order to ink it, I right click on it and I say stroke path. This is the only time I use strokes because it's already at resolution. And I use the, the brush as my tool because I've already set my brush for my inking. And then I say simulate brush or simulate pressure for that brush. And then it will give me a blade with those parameters. Nice and clean. So that's a way to do kind of technical inking. Should you want to. Hairline. Also, instead of being limited to the, the pins and the digital or the analog tools you have, a little elfier. By digitally inking, you can change the size of your tool at any time. So I can go for a more gestural, more brush-like tool and finish it up. So if I want a lot of shadows on this half of the face, it's a dark night. I could do that. 